Hello, and thank you for joining my presentation. In this presentation, I'll be covering our recent work on presenting an open source setup for radiation patterns for antenna radiation pattern measurements outside an anechoic chamber using a low cost positioning and understanding its limitation. Having looked at the existing options, having looked at what's available in literature and also commercially, and there has been a lot of interest in this topic quite recently, we came to a conclusion that fully automated measurements outside a chamber are more likely a positioning problem than an instrumentation equipment problem or even a transmitter and receiver problem. In fact, just to give a bit of background on our work, this work is not just to propose a setup that enables others to do measurements, but it's also to enable our work to do measurements in such an interesting time where we got to a point where we lost access to our conventional test facility and we had to characterize antennas at hand in a rapid way in a setup that could be deployed anywhere and didn't need the full size anechoic chamber or the huge expensive positioner. So taking a look at what's out there in literature and there are also a lot of commercial options but I'm only looking at the research options you can see that interest in low cost setups started in around 2011 so it might even be earlier implementations dating to the 1990s, but they're significantly higher in cost. And the main issue in here has been addressing the low cost transmitter. Can we use things like software defined radio and low cost transceivers instead of a VNA or a signal generator? There's also been work on positioners. So for example, there has been a lot of work on two dimensional automated positioners, which you can see in 2016 and 2020 work on the screen. And there has also been attempts towards hemispherical measurements where a very creative approach presented in the Antennas and Propagation Symposium uh, last year was using a dome made out of RFID tags. However, clearly these systems have their limitations and for example, the hemispherical system can only operate at a single frequency, which is out of RFID tags. So it's really of limited use outside a single frequency band. There have been different options, including even Wi-Fi hardware, RFID readers, and custom detectors, which I think were used in the setup proposed in 2020. Again, part of the same composition, part of the same competition. But to date, we haven't really found a setup which uses a 3D positioner. So we need to solve that problem. We need broadband operation. We need it to integrate with any transmitter. It's not limited to a specific band like RFID, and it also needs to be able to do hemispherical or at least hemispherical measurements. So the system blocks in our case, we've got a PC, at the center of that PC, we're running MATLAB, and MATLAB controls the VNA via a LAN connection, and that VNA connects to the transmitting antenna, which we're calling it transmitting just for the sake of discussion, although in a traditional VNA setup, it does act as both transmitter and receiver. And on the other end, we've got the antenna under test, which is being controlled by an open source robotic arm available from Arduino, which we'll talk about a bit later in more detail, and that is being communicated by serial, both of them which are synchronized and automated using the same MATLAB script. And using the off-the-shelf commercial uh, robotic arm, we are able to move the antenna hemispherically up to from zero to 180 degrees on both the azimuths and the elevation scale. In this setup, we have used a COTS VNA, and I will talk about that more in a minute. Obviously, both antennas have to be in the far field distance, and that is something we have respected in our measurements later in my presentation. We're looking at an open source system and there's always a cost and convenience trade-off. It's more of a minefield when it comes to lab automation. And you can see that one of the choices we have went for is MATLAB. And MATLAB is a commercial software and it does cost money. So in that sense, it's not open source. It does cost a few hundreds of pounds, even for an academic license and around twice the amount for a commercial license. Python, on the other hand, is a free alternative, but working with realistic VNAs and lab equipment, Manufacturers tend to provide more information and more support for MATLAB and even more support for LabVIEW, which locks you even further in a more expensive license and a more sophisticated software. So MATLAB was the decision of choice in our design library. Also, the communication between lab instruments and a PC is never straightforward. Modern day PCs do not really have a GPIB or uh, similar serial interfaces. So a crossover LAN cable costs orders of magnitude less than a GPIB adapter or GPIB interface to be installed in a PC. So we went for that as opposed to GPIB, which again, gets better support from VNA vendors, but as the cost and complexity of a system and limits the fact that we can label it open source. I'm sure people in the software community will have a lot more stricter definitions for open source than what we did. So, the elephant in the room, you might think, is a VNA. Why are we using a VNA when we know that network analyzers are bulky and 
quite expensive when we could use a low cost transmitter and receiver. So our implementations in research, which have shown single chip VNAs with comparable performance to their commercial counterparts, <coughs> excuse me, and we believe that positioning and getting the measurements is not really a TX or RX problem. It's more a problem of positioning and the environment as opposed to the noise in the receiver. So any device with a dynamic range more than 40 or 50 dB will most more than likely work in at least getting the main lobe of an omnidirection antenna or of a direction antenna. So what position are we working with? We looked at commercial options and we found that one of the simplest and easiest to communicate with and work with is an Arduino based robotic arm. The robotic arm, as the name implies, it can move in all directions, but we're only using two of the rotating servers, one to achieve the azimuth rotation and one to achieve the elevation rotation in green and blue respectively. And this way we can position the antenna in a hemisphere with a precision of up to one degree in order to be able to get our hemispherical patterns. That doesn't solve the 3D pattern issue. However, in our current software and in our current implementation, we simply stop the measurements and ask the user to manually rotate the positioner to cover the second hemisphere. And as a result, in the end, we just add both matrices together and end up with the 3D radiation pattern measurements. On the source side or the transmitter or however you call it, not the antenna on the test side, we have got a linearly polarized wire type antenna, a simple wire dipole. We know it's very high efficiency and it will have uniform radiation patterns. And in order to change the polarization, we simply rotated the source by 90 degrees. So this will probably explain why we have got quite a high cross polarization levels measured later in my slides. So the first thing we looked at was a micro strip patch antenna operating at 2.4 gigahertz. We've taken the antenna and we measured it, but we've also simulated the antenna using finite difference time domain in CSD micro studio. And you can see that in the bigger picture, the simulation and measurements are in fair agreement. You can see that the antenna is both side. You can see that it has a main back lobe, but you can see that the side lobes are significantly amplified in the measurements, which is mainly due to the radiation nodes and low levels being very difficult to measure in an echoic environment. And any radiation nodes will likely be filled by the reflections from the environment, especially if we're using an omnidirection source. These measurements were done with a degree step or with a five degree step. And you can see that it pretty much offers sufficient accuracy. And when merging both hemispheres together, the front lobe and the back lobe, we don't get significant errors. Let's look in more detail at the numbers. And in here, we can see the simulated values dashed and the measured values in a continuous line. And you can see that they, and if we look at the core polarized component, the black line, they are exhibiting a good agreement in the main lobe, although the measured lobe is narrower than its simulated counterpart. So you can see that the beam widths is narrower and the antenna is being more directional. We attribute this to the reflection of the, the positioner itself. We have not lined the positioner yet with any absorbing material. So we think those additional reflections narrowed the beam further, which is an effect we have observed in anechoic chamber measurements where we position our antenna on big objects such as a human body. We tend to notice as they get more directional than the antenna being simulated in space. One thing to validate this will be simulating the antenna along with a structure similar to the positioner, and that is part of the work we will be doing in the future to further verify the performance. The second thing we're looking at is the cross polarization levels in red. So you can see the dashed lines, versus, which is simulation versus the discrete points, which are the measurements. You can clearly see that the measured cross polarization level is significantly higher by more than 15 dB in the main lobe direction. Recalling back, we mentioned that we have used a linear dipole antenna and we have rotated it manually to realize the cross polarization measurements in both vertical and horizontal components. And this explains why we are unable to get an accurate, good cross polarization isolation between the vertical and horizontal components. It can also be attributed generally to the reflections in the echoic environment. It's worth noting that from the different studies which have cited at the start of this presentation and which are also discussed in more detail in our paper, we are the first to present cross polarization measurements in an echoic environment. So even though we can see that it's not great, we can see that it does not match with the simulation to a good extent, but it represents an interesting case study and something to look into in more detail. For instance, you can see that the pattern and the trend follows quite closely, however, off by more than 15 dB in magnitude, which again is room for improvement. Looking at a different example, which is a patch antenna operating at a higher frequency, we can see that in our dashed line, the simulations, and also in our measured lines for the core polarized component, 
So they are in very good agreement. So the dashed part of my curve represents the angles at which the disagreement between both simulation and measurement is less than 1.5 dB, which is usually the accuracy level promised by a commercially available positioner. However, as was the previous design, once you get back to the back lobe of the antenna, you can see that the measured component is significantly higher than the simulated components by more than a 7 dB difference. And that difference you can see increases to more than 10 dB at a, at a different angle, right in the very back of the cross polarization setup. And if we were to look at our measurement room and we will report this to reflection of the environment we're in. So in fact, at the angles between 300 and 360 degree, that is where the VNA itself and the controlling PC were positioned. So they did reflect a significant portion of the RF power and as a result directed back to the omnidirectional monopole antenna, also a dipole antenna used to perform the measurements. So if we are to achieve better results, longer cables and a larger lab space are definitely the way forward to reduce such uncertainties. The final thing we did in evaluating our system was comparing our measurements using the low cost setup, using the plotted as the, blue, as the black squares against anechoic chamber measurements of the same antenna, which we have used in our previous work. So the purple line is measured in an anechoic chamber over a similar structure to the positioner, which was used to characterize the wearable antenna. And we can see that in the main lobe, minus 30 to 30 degrees, they are both in almost identical agreement. And they both exhibit a similar trend around the back lobe of the antenna. If you look at the radiation nulls, for example, we can see that in the experimental low cost setup, so the small drift between the two nulls observed in the anechoic chamber measurements, we're more likely to attribute this to an error in the positioning of the robot, which resulted in perhaps a 10 degree shift, resulting in the nulls being in a different location to where we'd expect them to be. However, we can also see that in other parts of the angular scanning beam width of the antenna, we can see that the anechoic chamber measurements in fact show a higher side lobe which does not exist in both simulations and in our echoic low cost measurements. So in a way, if the antenna is to be measured around other objects and those objects are not completely absorbing, then the anechoic chamber measurements will exhibit some uncertainty which will be comparable to that exhibited in a low cost setup like what we are proposing. So to summarize my talk, we are proposing a low cost Arduino based hemispherical antenna positioner, which relies mostly on open source components and has got the potential to be changed to utilize completely open source components. The entire cost of the setup is less than 500 US dollars, including the positioner and all the cabling needed to realize the positioning system and the source antennas. We obviously didn't include the VNA or the software license in this calculation. We've evaluated an indoor echoic environment for both side antennas, microstrip patch antennas. We've compared it to both time domain simulations and also to anechoic chamber measurements. The more important thing is that our library is available online. You can go to this Git library, download all the software codes which are used to automate the VNA, which is a Rodian Schwarz ZVB4 instrument. And it also includes the Arduino code for the positioner and some calculations in MATLAB for plotting the 3D radiation patterns. There are obviously limitations. It's not an ideal setup and it's not expected to completely replace echoic measurements or even approach them in accuracy in the near future. We have only, we have only characterized both side antennas so far. We, it will be interesting to look at how the setup reacts to omnidirectional antennas and has reflections might mask the radiation pattern of an omnidirectional antenna like a monopole or a dipole. The second obvious step is replacing the VNA with a low cost transmitter and receiver. And we believe that the open source software defined radios available in the market are a good answer to this. And the final thing is improving the polarization isolation, also reducing the noise by using a more directional antenna as a source. So we are looking at the moment on the design of low cost direction antennas, because as you know, directional horn antennas and metrology antennas are quite expensive and will go against the whole idea of our low cost antenna measurement setups. So that's it for my presentation. So thank you for listening, if you're still listening. And if you do have any questions, suggestions, or simply are interested in finding more about our setup, then please do go and visit the library, pull it, or even upload your own updates to the library and get in touch with me if you have further questions. Thank you.